What's up guys? So we have been talking about making money with woodworking, the woodworking side hustle. So I'm going to continue that with what tools do we need? I'm getting a lot of questions. What tools do you start out with? It may surprise you on how few of tools and actually how cheap that it is to get started making money with woodworking. So stay tuned. To continue on our series of how to make money with woodworking, uh, how to start a woodworking business, things like that, we're going to actually hit on the topic of what tools do I need to get started. I'm getting a lot of comments, uh, a lot of questions from people wanting to get into uh, the side hustle with woodworking gig, and they're just curious on what tools do they actually need. Do they need to go out and buy this new CNC or this brand new table saw or a planer even? No, you do not. If you watched the last video that I did, every single one of those projects done were done with basic tools. I mean, there really wasn't anything super fancy to it. I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you how you can start off simple, like the bare bones basic. And once I mention one of those tools, I'll kind of tell you where to progress to after that. If you want to be notified anytime that I release something new like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button, hit that notification, and then you'll have all of this at your fingertips. Okay guys, let's get started. So to give you some examples, because I know what a lot of you guys are saying, you have to have this fancy stuff, you don't. Another example of really cool stuff that I've made with basic tools is this. This thing was a monster. I mean, it was crazy to make. A nicer, you know, nicer saws, nicer equipment wouldn't have made this any easier to make. I made this with a job site table saw and a miter saw. So, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about are saws. They're the most expensive things that you're gonna buy whenever you start off. A miter saw, table saws, things like that. I mean, they're expensive. But when you're first starting out, you know, and you're doing kind of the side hustle projects, you don't have to have those just yet. You can start with this, but you have to have at least this. Well, I say that, but I actually started off with a $10 miter box. It's kind of limited on what you can do with it, but for a lot of simple projects, that's what you need. So back to saws. You need a circular saw of some sort. It does not have to be battery powered. Actually, the corded ones are a lot more powerful. These are just handy. So I have this and I also have a, a corded one as well. This saw will actually be able to make any type of cut that you really need. So essentially this is a miter saw and a table saw built into one to get started. Now I'm not saying it's feasible to make money in the long run with just using a skill saw or a circular saw of any kind. Um, you want to move up as you make money. The next tool that I would go to from this would be going up to your miter saw. Now, I started off, once I moved up from this, actually once I moved up from the miter box, moved up to this, then I moved up to a just standard miter saw. It was a 10 inch miter saw, got the job done. Then as I got into more intricate things, then I moved into a compound sliding miter saw. And then I moved into what I have now, the 12 inch sliding compound miter saw has dual bevel, all of that stuff. You do not have to start with that. You do not have to start with some of the best equipment. You can start with this and come out with the exact same type of result. So from the circular saw, once you have a miter saw of some sort, you can start to think about a table saw. They actually make some really good job site table saws out there that you can do a ton of stuff with. Like I mentioned, I built this with a job site table saw. I did not have my big fancy saw yet. Uh, didn't need it for this. Job site table saw worked out just fine. The only problem with the job site table saws are they have a smaller work surface. So I went ahead and I built a table using the tools that I had to use as an off feed and um, actually support this, bring it up. Trust me, do that. And then you'll be able to make jigs, things like that, and keep adding on to it. So once you have gotten to the point with the job site table saw where it's not enough power, you're needing to pump out more products, then you can start looking at your professional table saws or your industrial table saws. But do not think that you need to go out, 
buy a three, four, five thousand dollar table saw that has a blade on it, the stop, you know, drops and all that stuff. To begin, you do not. Okay, and this is gonna be a, an obvious to a lot of people out there, but drill and driver. This is gonna be really short talking about these. Get a good quality brand. Doesn't have to be DeWalt, whatever. There's tons of awesome brands out there, but buy a decent cordless drill driver set. And yes, you need them both. You can't just have the drill. I guess you could just have the drill you know, and not actually use it as a driver as well. But you at least have to have this because you need to be able to pre-drill things uh, so your wood doesn't split. Drivers are awesome though, quick interchangeable bits, and you're gonna use a ton of different types of bits with woodworking. Oftentimes you can catch these on sale. They'll come with the drill driver, they'll come with the skill saw, oscillating saw, just all kinds of different things. But these are a must, and where you would move up from here will be a drill press. For now, getting started, this is all you need. But eventually you move up to a drill press, so on and so forth. And this building heating up, sounds like my bones in the morning, getting out of bed, popping, cracking. Pocket hole jigs. They make a ton of different kinds. I use Craig. But pocket hole joinery, I know there's a big debate, you know, it goes on all the time. You know, real carpenters don't use pocket holes. Well, go look at your cabinets. I mean, I can almost guarantee your cabinets right now were put together with pocket joinery. And remember, this is a side hustle. This is a way to make money. So you, you cannot spend hours and hours on one product and be able to get the value of your time out of that product if you use very fancy joinery. You know, if you're looking for something to turn over quickly, to make a lot of, to sell, you're looking at speed on your part. Now do not decrease your quality because your quality is your name, you know, but you have to think about the, uh, the fastest way to get the highest amount of quality and pocket hole joinery is, is the fastest way uh, to join really any type of material. Yes, after you move on from pocket joinery, um, you know, you can get into dovetails, you can get into biscuit joinery, you know, you can get into, there's all kinds of the dominoes, things like that. But for now, get a decent pocket jig. Some of them are even, you know, snap on, you know, that you can pick up for, you know, 20, 30 bucks. But a pocket hole jig is essential for starting out with uh, woodworking, these side hustles. If you prefer to move on, you know, if you prefer to spend the time, you know, with biscuit cutter, which is not going to work in all applications, um, things like that, go for it. But from a pocket hole jig, you will move on. Like once you start to get, your name gets out there, someone wants a nice piece of furniture, let's say if you move on just from the side hustle of, you know, pumping out quantity, and you want to start selling bigger pieces, then that's when you would look at dovetails. And there's a million different types of, um, of joints out there, box joints, things like that. And with your table saw, you can make all kinds of jigs to make these joints happen. There are some very simple joints that will really dress up uh, any type of a product, make it look super cool. We'll get into that in another video, but uh, finger joints, um, splines, things like that. I mean, anything extra like that, you know, adds character, but then you're getting into different species of wood, walnut, things like that. For this, like I said, we're looking at getting started and to get your name out there and to get these products sold. So time is key with this. You have to be able to mass produce these items, get them out there while they're hot. And again, I'm not saying decrease quality. Do not do that. That is the worst thing that you can do. If somebody gets a piece of junk, they're gonna tell everybody. Social media, I mean, it's great for marketing, it's great for advertising, it's great for selling stuff, but it's also great for running your name into the dirt. And really the only person that's gonna run your name into the dirt is you if you try to cut corners. Pocket joinery is not cutting corners. This is a huge debate, but again, go look at your cabinets, go look at a lot of the major companies out there, um, what they're selling. This pocket joinery, it's a way undervalued tool. Jigsaw. 
Again, this is another item that can come in that big kit, you know, that I was talking about, you know, whenever you find them on sale. Or you can buy a corded one. It does not have to be battery powered, they're super handy. Um, being battery powered, if you already have a set with the, um, with the batteries, it may be just as cheap to go ahead and just pick up a battery powered one. You need one of these if you don't have a bandsaw. I still do not have a bandsaw. I have a lot of fancy equipment, but I do not have a bandsaw yet. That's on the list. And remember how I was talking about not going into debt? I'm going to keep emphasizing this, guys, because that is the number one mistake that people do. You know, that, that just, just don't do it, okay? You spend the money that you make to buy new tools, period. Do not swipe that card. Don't do it, okay? All right, so... Like I was saying, I still do not have a bandsaw yet. Yes, I want one. It is on my list. And I'm not going to go into that to buy one. So for now, I still use a jigsaw. That super cool split dresser, and even this, you know, this is another kind of funky uh, build that I did where, you know, I just got really creative. I just did it for me. This is not a side hustle type of thing, but it's very, very intricate jigsaw. Didn't use a bandsaw for any of it. So, so you can do what you need, you know, to get started with a side hustle, to actually make money, to make your cuts, all of that with a jigsaw. You can make straight cuts with this, use your guides, do some research. People underestimate the jigsaw. Very, very handy. You can bevel this, you can put them on different degrees, things like that. I mean, it's just a very, very needed and handy tool, especially if you do not have a bandsaw, but that is the next step up. There's really not a whole lot in between, you know, a jigsaw and a bandsaw. Save your money if you want to move up from this, and you may not even find the need to. You know, if you don't need a tool, don't buy it yet. You know, don't buy it until you need it because it's just gonna sit in the corner, then you have to worry about it. Hey, is it gonna get rusty? You know, things like that. You have to maintain things that you aren't using. Brad Naylor, pancake compressor. You can find them on sale. You can find them really about every day for about 200 bucks for a whole kit. It's needed. It's not a absolute must. Yes, you can, you know, tack in the little brads for your trim, things like that. But then that's going to kind of do away with the, the fact that you need to speed things up a little bit. I can see that in very fine woodworking, intricate things uh, where you may be putting in, you know, brass, you know, tacks or brass nails, you know, things like that, uh, just for the looks. But this trim speed plus with the air compressor, there are tons of different things that you can use for this. I actually had a, um, I think I did a video on a nail remover that I have. You know, if I'm using some, some reclaimed material that's, you know, loaded with nails, I can chuck that right into here, pop, 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 all the nails are out, get to work. Um, blowing off your, your workspace, you know, you need to keep dust out, you know, especially when you're finishing, things like that. Um, just tons and tons of uses for an air compressor and a finished nailer or brad nailer, whatever you'd like to call it. And really that's about it. That's as simple as it is. Those are the things that I think that you really need to start a woodworking business, to start a woodworking side hustle that is going to succeed. Those are the things that you need kind of for speed and you can buy all of that stuff for really cheap if you don't already have it and you may already have everything. And if it's working for you, you're not uh, noticing that one item or one machine is slowing you down, stick with it save the money up, buy the next machine that you need. But if something, you know, is, let's say that your table saw is bogging down or burning your wood and it's not the blade, it's just the blade speed, things like that, then it's maybe time to start looking into your professional, you know, or your industrial, you know, type of saws. But have the money saved up for that, buy it. There are a lot of things that I did not talk about that are, you know, I just kind of gave as givens tape measures, you definitely need squares, basic hand tools, but those are necessity as well. Clamps, and you don't have to have the big, expensive, huge clamps yet, especially if you're not doing like big glue ups and you know projects like that. But you do just need some basic hand clamps, you know, to start with. 
So everything that I just mentioned are tools that I used in the video that I made, you know, telling you guys about the top five side hustle projects that I did, my most profitable side hustles. Those are the simple tools, you know. Most of those things that I did, I did in my garage. This is before I built this shop. This is before I had, you know, the nicer equipment and things like that. But you know what? Those items that I was telling you about allowed me to build this shop, to buy the nicer tools. I did it as I went. There are tons and tons of woodworking tools that you would love to have. Buy it as it comes along. Build your business. You know, and essentially what this is, we can call it a side hustle if you want, but it's essentially a business. Build it up, buy as you go, pay for things as you go. Do not go into debt. Do not try to keep up with the Joneses. Your neighbor has a CNC machine, a laser cutter, all that stuff. Who gives crap? I mean, who cares? Who's making the money? Who's bringing in the cash? They're still paying payments on that. You know, while you're making money, building simpler things, but different things. Check out my other videos. I talk about the importance of being different, how to actually make money with woodworking, the keys to it, because it is a beast out there. I mean, everyone is trying to do it, but that is the difference in success, is the ones that try to do things and the ones that take the time, like watching this video, to learn because that is another huge key. That is another huge tool that people forget. They're so worried and consumed about buying tools, they forget that the number one tool is research, education, learning. I mean, it's all essentially the same thing, but that is what it is. Learn how to use all of these tools. Learn the tips, the tricks, things like that. And that's what's going to make you different. That's what's going to make you successful when other people are going to start failing. All right, guys, if you have any questions about any of these things, drop them in the comments. I'll answer as many as I can. It's awesome. The response, love hearing from you guys. Keep it in your mind. Keep it in your head. You know, this is a business. Move forward with it. Do not get discouraged whenever joints don't match up. Figure out what's wrong. Figure out what's wrong with your saw. Recalibrate, things like that. You've got this, guys. Again, if you've enjoyed this video, if you want to see more, if you have ideas, if you have questions, shoot them to me. I'll try to answer them. I'll try to make a video about it, whatever you guys need. Smash that subscribe button, follow for more, make sure to hit that notifications. I will give you guys as much information as I have in this crazy brain of mine up here. So thanks for watching guys. Till next time. See ya.